just to give you a little understanding of what my power wall is actually doing. The power wall being this, 12.7 kilowatts on paper, 3000 watt output inverter. I do get asked the question occasionally, what am I doing with it? What am I powering? The answer is, my house, being summer, I'm doing very well. And to give you an idea what sort of power we're saving, this is a basic layout of my house. Where you've got the master bedroom on, square walking robe, garage, study, lounge, kitchen, family meal, bedroom, two and three, laundry, bathroom, toilet. So, my house is wired. One circuit breaker for the power points. This side, and now the side is this side. I was running this side quite a bit because here on this side we've got TV here, TV there, washing machine, and all the lights are put on here. So they're low, relatively low appliances to run. Like TV is about 100 watts roughly. That can peak a few hundred watts. They do a load about 100 watts a lot. So like I said, all the lights are put to the same breaker, so it was all off it. Uh, recently, in the meter box, I put a changeover switch, so I can do all the appliances on this side of the house, all the power points, like you know, your kettles, uh, toasters, even the fridge here, I pulled to this side of the house, and that was running with all the TVs, washing machines, because that Fridge is reasonably low, about 180 watts of power it draws, roughly speaking. So in saying that, now I have two changeover switches, so I can actually have the grid come in and supply either solar or grid to one side or the other, whichever I want or both on solar or both on grid, doesn't matter. So that's how I've got it hooked up. To give you an idea, our house consumption roughly was about 10 kilowatts a day on average 10 to 12 but about 10 before I did solar before I actually went into solar so give you an idea 10 kilowatts our bill would have been roughly about 450 dollars on the average didn't matter what part time of the year it just seemed to be about that 410 was the cheapest so that 490 was the nearest always every year didn't matter also we have the evaporative cooling system, which I put on this side too. That's about between the evaporative uh, one TV and the fridge. You're looking at about one kilowatt drawn off the house. So anyway, let's have a look. This is my figures I've been running through or keeping a track of. So the quarter of let's say about the seventh of every quarter. 7th of 11th, 2008, roughly speaking, that bill came in at $252. This is reasonably close, these figures, so just trust that I've been legit with this. That quarter is about 273 that ended in this February of 2019. Uh, April of 2000. Well, 2019, I should say that word. What am I talking about? 2019. 272 that came in, at it? Then this was about oh, August 2019. That was 388. That would have been the end of our winter, August, Southern Hemisphere. Then the 11th of this year. It's come in about 311 and I have put extra panels in just the end of winter so my note was added the five extra panels about 175 watts that's the ones on the house roof can't quite see, but they're on the house with those ones. This is where I put them. They're brilliant. They're catching more of the morning sun. So, that total, at this point, I have 12.7 kilowatts still. Where I go about 11.35 out of those batteries. By the time I lose about 100 watts, 
through the inverter of its loss of efficiency. MP, um, this is a PWM and not as efficient as MPP, so you lose about 100 watts. I don't know what it is in MPP. Okay, so now as we track in for the current quarter we're in. As I've made a note today of the 22nd of the 12th, so the bill starts on the 8th of the 11th, so 2000, uh, a month and a half later, we're pulling about $188 roughly. These figures are quoted is about $125 or $150 service charge, can't remember, but that $73.64 is the actual usage of electricity. It did go up in the last couple of months. We're paying about 36 cents a kilowatt hour. And as you can see, this is the how much kilowatts a day we are using off the grid on an average. And as you can see, even from the, uh, sorry about that, get back to where I was sitting. 11th of the 8th, or even 3 days after, 3.6, 4.5, so obviously you can't get a good accurate meeting, reading until you get close to the end of the month, but you can see they're coming down quite a lot. How much kilowatts a day we're using off the grid, how much power we were using an hour off the grid. Obviously these figures are just what we are paying for rather than what we generating it's nothing to do with generating the whole idea of this system for me is what i can save off the grid so it's coming down quite a lot and it's dropping this quarter but mind you it is summer with those extra panels making a hell of a difference and i've got more i'm working on the other side of the house on the west side so to catch afternoon sun so anyway, just to give you an idea what all this is about so that's the house the only thing that's not connected to the solar is the oven Otherwise, the rest of the house, the lights are connected with this side on the um, PowerPoint circuit breakers. And this is separate to the rest of them. Just to reiterate, it can be all switched over, tra transfer switches in the meter box. And if we get good days like summer, we pay for no power whatsoever apart from the oven. Our oven is about 2.6 kilowatts an hour. So almost, I would say 90% of all those figures for this quarter... 90% of those figures is because of the oven, I'm guessing they're about roughly. Anyway, just to give you an update on what I'm actually doing with my power wall, what I'm powering. But anyway, thank you very much. If you got this far in the video, very much most appreciate it. Please subscribe, keep updates on videos coming out, and drop comments and just let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you very much, and keep eye out for the next one. Thank you, bye-bye.